Increased agricultural productivity, both synthetic fertilisers and organic manures are added to farmland. One major cause of the nitrogen pollution in waterways is the diffuse runoff from farmland. The issue of nitrate pollution in waterways needed to be tackled as it was causing issues in aquatic environments such as anoxic conditions, eutrophication and algal blooms. If ingested, nitrates can also cause health problems such as blue baby syndrome where nitrates reduce the ability of red blood cells to transfer oxygen around the body causing slow suffocation of the infant. In order to reduce nitrate pollution, nitrate vulnerable zones have been created. The European Commission Nitrate Directive requires areas of land that drain into water to be designated as nitrate vulnerable zones. DEFRA monitor the pollution levels in water and review areas in need of designations every four years. Over 50, 58% of land in Britain is designated as nitrate vulnerable zones. Within these land areas, farmers must comply with regulations set by the Environment Agency. The first of these regulations is the spreading of organic slurry. Slurry must not be spread within 10 metres of any surface water or within 50 metres of wells and boreholes. There are also regulations for manufactured fertilisers. Manufactured fertilisers must not be spread within closed seasons unless there are crops with specific natural requirements within this season. Manufactured fertilisers must not be spread within 2 metres of surface water or at any other time where there is serious risk of nitrogen pollution, such as in waterlogged soils. Another regulation is storage capacity. Farmers must have at least five months worth of storage for slurry, or in the case of pigs and poultry, six months. Construction must meet legal standards and be able to hold all the slurry produced in the closed seasons and the other, any other time of the year where it may not be appropriate to spread the slurry, for example when the soils are waterlogged. So David, what changes did, did you have to make to be in compliance with MZ rules and regulations on your farm? Um, we had no slurry storage at all on the farm, but well, all of it was spread in the muck spreader on a daily basis. Um, so we had to fill the lagoon to hold a minimum of 180 days storage. Um, the other thing we've done to reduce water going into the lagoon, we covered in the majority of our feeding and loafing area to minimise rainwater entering the lagoon. So do you feel MPZ has had a positive impact? And if so, how? I think so, yeah. Now, after a few years down the line, we're getting to understand the nitrogen in our slurry. It's targeting our spreading day. Um, currently, we're looking at better ways of spreading the slurry, whether it's even injecting it into the land really get, you know, every bit of nitrogen out of slurry. Um, yes, I think we're growing heavier and better crops. It's not treating, treating slurry as a resource rather than nitrogen-rich resource rather than a waste product.